Verse for us. Fucking theory. Yes. Yeah. Custom made. So this is how we understand the function of a parallel circuit. So you've already, you should have already done all the series stuff. That stuff's a little straightforward. It's either the same where you just add stuff together, Ohm's law, blah, blah, blah. The tricky part is parallel circuits and how the current flows. So the rules of my theory, big analogy or something, metaphor, no one knows the difference. The bucket here could be any bucket, big or small. That represents the battery. Why? Because the bucket is what's holding all the water in this. The water represents the electrons. So the electrons are stored inside a battery. The water is stored inside a bucket. What might that look like? Here's a bucket. Yeah, I almost took APR. Here's water. Filling it up, filling it up. This is liquid water, by the way, you chem nerds. Yeah, I know. I know what you signed up for next year, you juniors. Punks. There it is. Beautiful. Now, bucket, no holes in the walls. Water stays in it. What happens if you take a screwdriver, pierce the side, we have a hole. That represents a loop. Why? Because in a battery, the electrons need a loop to lead the battery and move. In a bucket, for the water to move, you need a hole. So let's say we punch a little hole in the side, right there. What's going to happen? You bet it, that water's going to go flying out. And if we have one hole in the bucket, and the water goes flying out, that means we have a series circuit. Now, the last thing is the size of the hole. Is it a little tiny pinhole? Or is it a big hole? Big one's going to allow for more um, current to flow out, more water to flow out. That means there is less resistance. If you have a smaller one, it's going to be more difficult for those water molecules to move through, so it's going to be more resistance. So there we go. You have a constant um, voltage here because the battery isn't changing. The battery is a 9 volt, 6 volt battery, 1 and a half volt battery, whatever. Um, your current is determined by that, and there's your resistance. So in a series circuit with nothing changing, um, that's what it will look like. And given enough time, the water will eventually leave, the battery will be dead, the bucket will be empty. Um, in a parallel circuit, similar start, we will still fill our bucket up with water. But the tricky part here is as we punch holes in the side, now we have one, two holes in it. So now we have one path with some resistance, and now we have another path. Both have a resistance, both have a positive resistance. Let's give them numbers here. Let's say this one is 10 ohms, and this one is 5 ohms, right? So you want to say, oh, 10 and 5, the total resistance 15. That's not the case. Because here, the bigger the hole, the more holes there are, the more water you can lose. So according to Ohm's law, we have constant voltage, but now we're losing more water. Water is your current here, your electrons, and therefore we're going to be having a lower equivalent resistance. That's why in your reference table it says R E Q for equivalent. It doesn't say the total or the summation of your resistance. It's what the resistors would be equivalent to if you just had one instead. So you got to remember here, it's tricky, but always think about a bucket filled with water. The more holes you punch into it as you just stab it, the more current you're going to get leaving that bucket. The faster the water level is going to go down. And the more current you have, the less resistance you have. Now we're inside and it's cold out, so we can't really do this demo. Just kidding. It's quarantine. Can't go outside. Here we go. We got water in, it's not a bucket, but it's got a handle, so it's easy for me to hold. And I'll pop the top off. So we got some nice, easy um, airflow moving. I have a little tiny screwdriver. So the first one, uh, oh, maybe I do want the top one, but I don't want to splash. That'd be crazy. Um, we'll just, <sighs> never done this. We'll just stand the side, right? What could be so difficult about this? Oh, and now. We've created a loop, and now we have current flowing out of the bucket. This is a series circuit. But what we're going to do is we have to stab a few more loops in it, and now 
we have more loops going, and as you can see, we have more and more water flowing out of the bucket. You can put loops on this side, um, but it's starting to slow down. Why is that? Because we don't have airflow. Now that we have airflow coming through the top, you can see we have water draining out of each loop. Each loop has resistance to it, um, so as you add more and more uh, loops, you get um, less overall resistance, and you can see it's draining way, way faster now that we have uh, all these loops. You can even maybe oh, pull in the bottom there, a couple at the top of the airflow. And that's, yeah, that's just parallel circuits um, for you. The more loops you have, the less resistance, the more current that can move out of the bucket. All right? Go Dallers!